Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Rough Riders TV. Got another DIY video for you today on the Acura MDX. We're going to be installing the OEM transmission cooler to give us that 5,000 pound towing capacity. So while I change into my work clothes, let's take a quick look at the tools that you're going to need to do this job along with the uh, parts kit for, for getting this done. Okay, tools needed for this job. If you have a, uh, a drill motor or a impact wrench with a uh, socket attachment that'll make things just a little bit quicker and easier like always. A light um, can be helpful because some of the places can be a little dark. A pair of channel locks for the hose clamps. A push set of push pin pliers for the push pins. You don't need that but if you got it it makes it a little bit easier. A short Phillips head screwdriver or a jack um, with, the, with the long head Phillips uh, screwdriver. A couple of straight edge small one for the push pins and a, and a larger one. A nut driver um, to, for the hose clamps. If you're removing the battery tray, then you will need the extension, a couple of deep well sockets, and a 3 inch drive. If you're not, then you won't need any of that. Then I've got a 10, mil 10 millimeter socket for a number of the uh, bolts and stuff like that. Um, and then a 12 millimeter. I don't think you need this unless you're doing the battery tray. So um, that's pretty much all that you need. Basic hand tools uh, to get this job done. These are all the parts that you're going to need to do the auxiliary transmission cooler install. Now what I've got here is the uh, Acura OEM transmission cooler. I've got the pipe that comes um, from the Acura dealer. A couple of sections of hosing. Um, so this one is roughly 230 uh, millimeters or six and a quarter inches. This one's about nine and a half inches, uh, 295 millimeters. I've got six hose clamps, three bolts uh, that are uh, M6 by 20, and one bolt that's an M6 by 12, and then four washers. Now that's everything that normally comes in the kit that you would get, which is about 250 bucks from the uh, uh, online parts stores. It might be more, even more at your local Acura dealer. Or you can do what I did and buy everything individually. So I ordered this online for um, about $65. I think it was like 61 and change plus shipping. And then I picked this up at a local Acura dealer for about $20. And then for the hoses and hose clamps I picked up at the local auto parts store and then the bolts I picked up at the local hardware store. Now that's everything you'd find in the kit for about $250 minus the warning labels which, you know, obviously I don't really care about. They provide no function. So, um, you know, it just made more sense to buy all the individual components and then and pull it together and create essentially what comes in the kit for a fraction of the cost. Now, if you watched my uh, tow hitch video installation, my original plan was just to go with an aftermarket cooler uh, for, you know, 50 bucks or so. But... Um, once I saw that I could actually get the OEM cooler for just a little bit more, I decided to go ahead and go that route. And the main reason was, is because just like on the tow hitch, um, this has all the predefined mounting locations ready to just bolt right in. So, you know, that makes it uh, very convenient and very easy to install this as opposed to uh, some of the extra steps you have to go through when you do the aftermarket cooler because the way those essentially install is you install them using what amounts to being a zip strip and what they do is they give you uh, uh, four zip strips um, that have flared ends on them and then you feed them through the fins and you basically zip tie it to the AC condenser. The problem when you start doing the zip strip model is you know one of the things you have to be careful of. One is you have to be careful when you're installing them uh, because if you puncture a tube or something like that on your AC condenser now you've got a much bigger problem. The other thing that you know tends to happen is as you feed the zip strips through you have to uh, loosen up the condenser and then you put a essentially a fastener on the back side of that and then trim off the excess and so now you have that trimmed off excess rubbing up against the radiator and so you could have a problem there as well. And, you know, let's face it, you know, you're going to have, the car's going to be running and, and you're going to have engine vibrations and road vibrations and all that kind of stuff. 
And so those those plastic pieces are going to, you know, essentially, you know, chafe and wear over time and, you know, it could end up causing damage down the road. So, you know, for being able to do this for roughly the same price, so, you know, an extra $30, $40 with the factory cooler, it just made more sense to spend a little bit of extra money. Now, if I would have had to buy this piece for $250, I would have went with the, you know, a, a decent aftermarket cooler for $50 and, and call it a day. But um, because it wasn't going to be that much more, I decided to go and get the factory, uh, the factory cooler. So not only do I get the factory mounts, I also get the product that was designed for the, you know, and sized for the Acura MDX. So I know that this is going to provide sufficient cooling for the transmission, you know, because the Acura designers designed it to do so. The other thing um, that I like about this is because they give you, you know, uh, this hosing or you can order this, this metal, metal tubing, it essentially wraps around the, the AC condenser and the radiator. And being metal, I don't have to worry about um, hoses, you know, like this being fed through and around the radiator where it can start rubbing up against the hose and, you know, potentially cause a, a leak or something like that. You know, I'm not going to have that problem with this. So, you know, for all of those reasons, it just made sense to do um, the OEM because now I'm, I'm doing it for, you know, under $100 versus, um, you know, an aftermarket for 50 bucks or so. So it's a little bit more, but everything else that you get just makes sense. Now let's talk about the cooler design as well, uh, because I think that's important to note here. This is what's called a plate and fin design cooler. Now, if you've seen some of the aftermarket uh, coolers, what they look like is you'll see an S-shaped tube wrapped in fins like this. And, um, you know, those are, those are fine. They're, they're good designs, but they don't provide as much surface area as a, a stacked plate and fin design does. Because if you look at the surface area of the tube versus the surface area of these plates, um, these plates provide a lot more surface area, which means better cooling. So what all that equates to then is that I can get more cooling capacity out of a smaller space than I could with a tube and fin design. In other words, I would have to have probably two to three times the size of this cooler in order to get to, to achieve the same level of cooling capacity out of a tube and fin design as I, as I get out of this plate, the stack plate and fin design. So, you know, that's why this can be much smaller and fit into the, the car um, and still meet the, the needs of the, the transmission when you're towing. So, um, that's you know, why I, I went ahead and chose the uh, OEM transmission cooler and as opposed to going with uh, the third party. So let's, uh, let's move to the next step and let's start the uh, installation process on this. We now need to start taking apart uh, the front fascia of the car off, the bumper cover and all that, so that we can get in there and work. So we're going to start that now. Um, you've already seen some of this when I did the uh, cooler install. I'm going to go ahead and pop the hood. I need to get this uh, shroud cover off. I need to get the, there's a bunch of uh, push pins and stuff on the bottom that I need to take off. And then there's some bolts uh, on the inside of the fender that need to be undone and stuff as well. So as you may remember from the uh, tow hitch install, when I was getting to the battery, this just lifts up. And out of the way. Now we've got to start pulling our push pins. Obviously be careful not to drop these. Okay, with the shroud off and the snorkel for the airbox off, I've got a number of push pins on the fascia that are holding it on from the top. So there's one here, another one here, third one here, four and five. So if I use a small screwdriver and pry this up like that, I can now pull the whole thing out. 
and you can see that this has a little metal retainer clip in it so you don't pull this whole center piece out because it's it's going to be held in place by that retainer clip so you just got to get it up enough where you can pop the whole thing out okay so I've got a series of Phillips head screws right here and here and here uh, holding the uh, front part of the fascia on uh, by, at the fender well so I've got to get to those you notice I've turned the tire in slightly just so I can get to them a little bit easier and then when I go to the other side I will uh, turn the tire the other way to get to those okay so looking from underneath the car I've got a series of push pins with the retainer clips on them and I've also got uh, some bolts down here that look to be about 10 millimeter you know use your screwdriver and work your way around them around until you get it to pop just like that You should feel it snap when it comes. That looks to be the last one. We're going to start looking to see if this thing should start prying off and if there's any other hidden bolts or push pins holding it on. So, uh, do remember that if you've got, like on mine, I've got the sensors, parking sensors up front. So I'll, as I go to pull this off, I got to disconnect those wires. Um, if you've got any running lights or anything, you might have to pop those as well. So you know, just be aware of all that before you just go start ripping this thing off. But let's uh, let's start prying this off. See if it comes off. Okay, looking under the front of the car, there are four bolts that I need to pull. Uh, there's one here. There's one over here one right there and then one over here and those are attached to the lower part of the front bumper uh, and even though I pulled all the push pins and stuff along the the front uh, fascia I want to go ahead and pull those as well uh, because it looks like it's all attached okay, I'm going to start at the fender and just gently undo these snaps couple more push pins up top that I missed so I'm gonna grab those right now okay so here's the front fascia it comes around and snaps in here so I missed these two one on each side so I'm gonna get those right now okay I didn't find any uh, any more snaps or anything it's or any more push pins or anything in the area so it's just snaps that are holding it in so you can just again gently pull it so that you don't push anything and there's bulk of it now I've got to disconnect all the wires and stuff um, and then I should be able to pull the, pull this all the way off. Okay here you can see the sensors all wired in and if you follow them back it has a single plug right here that I can just unplug I should be able to just squeeze that pop that loose okay and with that the front fascia is off I can set that aside and now I've got room to work in here to get to everything that I need to get to to finish uh, putting this uh, transmission cooler in. Okay, so to be able to see where the lines go, um, these lines feed up through and through here, and to see where they attach on the inside, I need to be able to work up from the bottom. And right now this shroud is in the way, so I need to at least disconnect part of it. I don't think I gotta pull the whole thing off, um, but I do need to get it dropped down enough out of the way so that I can get up uh, up through here to get to the line. So um, right now I see a bolt right here and there's a push pin back over here and there may be some other things that I'm going to have to pull a little bit to get to get to everything. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so let's talk about the standard transmission cooling on this for a second so you can see what we're doing here. So 
as we get inside, you'll see there's essentially a line right here where my finger's pointing, and then there's another one right here that's going into the top of a cooler, or a, excuse me, a top of a filter. Okay, and this top of the this line runs from the the transmission cooler comes down into this filter into the transmission at least that's the, the flow direction I think it goes um, I'm going to verify that uh, so I think this is actually the return line and this one down here is the feed line but both these connect up to a series uh, to a couple of tubes that are running right here they come around to let's see if I can get in here and see this right yeah, here it's kind of hard to see where my fingers at but uh, these tubes run right here and then they come in and connect up to this cooler right there that's behind that hose um, right there so one line runs in goes through this little uh, radiator sort of like thing uh, with fins on it comes back out um, and then back into the transmission nice and cool. So that's the way it should be running. Um, in some cars, it might be on uh, some of the earlier MDXs and in other cars, uh, the way it typically works is you've got your AC condenser here and then you've got your radiator behind that and on attached to the side of the radiator is a separate little cooling tank uh, that is used for cooling the transmission. Looks like they've changed that design on, the, on this MDX so that uh, it has its own separate little cooling sol solution um, and uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to add our auxiliary cooler we're going to bolt it in essentially up front right here um, actually probably down here is where, where it'll go um, and that'll be in line with the, the factory cooling so that way or the standard cooling so that way you've got your your doubling or more your capacity uh, for cooling on this thing. So that's what we're going to do. What I need to do now is I need to torque load it and just verify uh, the feed and the return lines so that way I can make sure I get this hooked into the right uh, right flow. Um, this is going to sit in there like this and then it's going to then that bolt is going to drive up into this into this nut. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put that in and uh, we'll worry about tight or connecting up the hoses on the other side uh, in just a minute. But I'll get this pipe in and then I'll put the uh, uh, transmission cooler in. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll hook up the uh, tubing to the uh, transmission uh, itself. Right now I'm going to secure these hoses. You want those nice and snug so that they don't leak. But you want to be careful not to crush the, the tube ends. So those are just going to feed up through there. Pull that through like that. And then this just feeds up through here. And then we're going to take our nut. it up and through here just like that okay the transmission cooler is going to sit right here there's a tapped hole here there's a tapped hole here and then uh, there's one under here it's going to be a little hard to see but it just fits in right into those exact spots so I can tuck that in right down there and then I've got my three uh, M6 by 20s that I picked up at the hardware store. I'm just going to snug those down. So that's in there nice and snug. Now I'm going to attach the hoses. Tighten those down with a nut driver. You can also use a screwdriver if you don't have a nut driver available. That 
should be good. So now that is in place. So now the only thing left is to um, attach the line. So I got to figure out the feed and return. Um, and then I should be able to just pop this in line with the uh, transmission cooler. Okay, so that you guys can see everything better. Um, it'll also give me a little bit better access to things. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the battery and pull this cover off. You can see here's my hose coming off my cooler. Note that I did take a guess when I hooked them up and I hooked them up wrong. So I had to pull the uh, pipe off and then switch the hoses around. But you can see that that one goes in right there. And then that one goes in right there, and they're the perfect length. So we're going to just pop those in right now. Okay, so you can see here's the line. I've already pulled the bracket back. Um, and now these things like to stick on really uh, tight, so sometimes they can be a little hard. So what I did was to break it loose, I used some channel locks as well as a straight-edge screwdriver. And I grabbed it with the channel locks on one hand, and then I pried back with the screwdriver on the other. Fortunately, I can't really film that and hold the camera or I don't even have a tripod that'll actually let me get in there and record that all at the same time but once you get it broken free then you can pop it off pretty easy and now I just need to go down here and break this clamp loose and pull this off and then I can hook up the other ones okay so here's the section of tubing removed and now I can put on my other tubing I got double wall tubing here which is a little bit thicker and therefore doesn't like to move quite as easily okay so there we are transmission cooler is installed here's my top hose with my clamp in place there's my bottom hose down here with the clamp in place note um, you know one thing that might save you time later is to orient these clamps such that you can get to them easily when you need to later. Um, you know, if this were spinning around, so right now here's the tightening side. If I were to try and um, put it up here so that the, you know, was 180 degrees, uh, this one would be uh, much harder to tighten down, so I oriented it so I can get to it from the bottom of the vehicle. This one I oriented so I can get to it easily from the top, and uh, makes it, it will make the job easier if I have to, you know, do any work on this thing later, so. Um, so now the transmission cooler is installed what I've got to do is I got to put the battery back in power it up check it for leaks and make sure we're good and then I can put the fascia back together but what I've got now is the transmission cooler is down here and it's in line with the factory or the standard cooler so basically what happens is it comes out of the transmission through this line here comes up along here into the cooler as I said comes back out of the cooler on the bottom line comes into this hose here which feeds into the radiator comes in here uh, disperses through across all the, the plates and fins comes back out this uh, return line which then in turn connects to the filter right here and then back into the transmission so um, I left the uh, hoses so that they're connected prior to the filter as opposed to after the filter so that way if there's any debris anywhere the filter will catch it before it goes into the transmission if you put it after the filter then you know if there's debris that gets into the transmission cooler that you just installed it won't make it through the filter so um, I wanted the filter the last thing in, in going into the transmission because that's your last line of defense so that's uh, that's the transmission cooler installed let me uh, put everything back together we'll check it for leaks and if we're looking good then we'll start putting the, the fascia back on okay we're getting Warmth on the radiator cooler, on the transmission cooler. So we got fluid flowing. Not 
getting any leaks. Everything feels good. I'm not seeing any leaks down here. Good there. Nothing up there. No leaks there. We're checking here. No leaks. And the last one. Just gotta have to work my arm up in there. It's dry. So we're good. Now we're gonna go ahead and start putting the fascia back on and we'll take it for a test drive, see how it does. Okay, so putting the fascia back on uh, is just the opposite of how we took it off. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I'll go ahead and capture some of that on video, but you know, I think you guys have an idea, you know, of how it came apart. You should be able to figure out how it goes back together. Pretty much the same process. Okay, so there is the completed installation of the transmission cooler. You can see that it's got good airflow right in the front of the center of the grill. All right, so there you go. That's the uh, installation process for the OEM transmission cooler. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. Uh, the difficult, most difficult part you're going to probably run into is either you know disconnecting the hoses because they might be a little stuck, or getting the body trim panels back on on the on the underside. Um, but you know it's really not hard. Uh, even the most basic uh, mechanic can do this job. Pretty pretty straightforward. Um, it's it's very simple. So if you're doing an aftermarket cooler, the process is going to be pretty much the same, with the exception of the mounting option, because the OEM had the brackets and everything that made it uh, go in very very easily. If you're doing an aftermarket one, then you're essentially got to do the zip tie and you got to find a spot of where you want to put it and make sure it gets plenty of airflow. But connecting up the hoses and all that kind of stuff is all going to be pretty much the same. So um, there you go. If you got any questions, you know, please post them below. Like always, I'll do my best to answer them in a timely manner. And thanks for watching. And stick around, check out my other videos. If you like uh, what I'm doing here, you know, please subscribe and help spread the word. Thanks and have a great day.